Hello everyone, I am Erika of BeadingSchool.com and you are watching No One Has to Bead Alone, my weekly online workshop to make sure that every beader all around the world has company. Today we are going to bead the fez earrings designed by my friend Susie. But before we would start, please let me know if you can hear me, if you can see me. I see... The Eastleys. Good morning, ladies. Love what's being made today. Me too. It's such a nice bezel. I think you will like it a lot. I also learned it. I learned so much by beading it. Kata is here and Gunnel, Facebook user friend, and Susan and Claire. And Claire says, I can hear and see you. That's wonderful to know. Thank you so much. Yosin is here and Natalie and Tanya and Zuska and Cindy and Antoinette and Elena and Orit. So today you can follow the class in real time from the Beading School Facebook page, from the Beading School Facebook club and also from YouTube. If you said hi, but you haven't heard your name yet, then it means that I don't see your name. If you are watching from the Beading School Facebook Club, since it's a safe, closed space on the internet, then you might need to give special permission to my broadcasting program to see your profile. It doesn't do anything else, just make it possible for me to easier answer your questions, for example, or like, to have a nicer conversation, because then I can also greet Belinda and Marike and Joe and Ruth and Connie and Asaria is here and Rachel is here and Lita is here and Claudia and Claudia is wishing me happy belated birthday. Thank you so much, Claudia and Sherry, and Joanna, and Irene. Giza, Giza says she's unfortunately uh, sick today, wishing you speedy recovery so you can beat again soon. And Vex is here, and Joanna, and Deb, and Malka, and Linda, and... I see a bunch of Facebook user friends. Debbie, Vania, Margaret. Margaret says the sun is shining in my windows. In mine too, so I think that kind of messed with the settings of my lamps, which were set for like wintery time. <laughs> so now I'm all gray as my, my lamps are trying to like equalize and they just don't manage <laughs> and Nancy is here she says back for more inspiration Nancy has created an awesome beautiful set recently check it out check it out in the club you did so well with that pendant Nancy and Claudia says good morning all our fellow readers <laughs> Ready did one earring. Jennifer is here. Erica is here. Corinne is here. Corinne, thank you so much for bringing to my attention that there was a little typo or like uh, mistake in the material list. Uh, so there should be three and four millimeter fire polished beads. It is now corrected. So if you bought it earlier, then I recommend downloading it uh, from the free version. Uh, once again, so you have the correct version there. And yeah, let's look into what we are going to bead today. So the design that is on our bead mats today, wow, I have to like put aside a bunch of stuff here because I have so many secret projects just next to me with the beading school birthday week coming up next week. I hope you already signed up for the coffee time with Erica for next week. 
I will, sh I, will, I will continue with the project as soon as I removed all my secret stuff from next to me. Because I have designed some very special things for you that I am going to share next week. One already on Tuesday. And the next one, it's actually a surprise design for No One Has To Be The One. So I shared the material list for next week's No One Has To Be The One on the events page. However, I will reveal what we are going to beat together only when we start the class. But promise, it's like, I think it's one of the most interesting puzzles that I have designed so far. So, I hope that many, many, many of you will join me. So, back to Zuzi's earring. It's named Fez. Oh, this is actually my version, but I want to show the nicer one, which is Zuzi's original. So, Zuzi was working just as so many of us these weeks with the Jardin Majorelle Beading School Academy box. I even dressed up for it, by the way. <laughs> and she got inspired by the Tangerine Opal Rivoli, for which I actually chose the color after one of the flower pots in the Jardin Majorelle in Marrakesh. And she, uh, Zuzi designed a very interesting bezel using Miyuki bugles and tilas and bicons and all kinds of beads, which I will uh, name in a little while. But in the meanwhile, I just want to mention that if you would like to download the PDF tutorial that makes it easier for you to follow today's class, then please head over to no one has to be and there you can find both versions. One version is to support the broadcast. And you can, if you click that button, then it puts the tutorial to your shopping basket. Or the Beading School supports you version, if you need a helping hand to make sure that no one has to read alone, then you can download it for free. Just put in your email address and it will arrive in a little file. So until you are doing that, let's see what do you need for today's design. I will switch now to the material list. In the meanwhile, also Niti joined us and Chini and Irina and Terry. So for, uh, the focal of today's jewel is a 12 millimeter Rivoli. And you will need one piece for one motif or two pieces for a full pair of earrings. Then and Zuzi compared this part to the maze like bazaar and Medina of uh, the city Fez. Uh, the bezel is done with some tila and bugle beads from Miyuki. And from the tila, you will need four pieces for one motif, and for the bugle, from the bugle, you will need eight pieces for one motif because there are four on the front and four on the back holding the Rivoli tight. You will also need some four and three millimeter Preciosa Vicon beads. And while for a while, our magic number, number of repetitions around the motive will be four. Uh, so you will need four Tila beads, for example, but then we will switch to a different aesthetics. And from the four millimeter bicon beads, you will need only two pieces. But from the three millimeter bicon beads, you will need eight. Then there are also three and four millimeter fire polished beads. From the uh, four millimeter fire polished beads, you will need two pieces, just like the four millimeter bicons. And then 
from the three millimeter fire polished beads, you need four pieces. I don't recommend using green ones as I did. I'm not happy with how my color combination came out of this. I think I was too focused on the Pacifica Avocado fire polished beads that recently arrived. And I really wanted to use them, but I was kind of lazy to come up with a completely new color combination. And I thought that, ah, this is going to work out. No, it didn't, so don't do that. Stick to Zuzi's original. <laughs> and then after the fire polished beads, you will also need seed beads, three types. <laughs> so you will need Miyuki Delica size 11, you will also need Miyuki round seed beads in sizes 15 and 11. And from the 15s, I used two colors. I'm okay with that, how I am looking at my version. But again, this didn't work out well. So look at Susie's original. <laughs> and just to show you, this is my version. Not too bad, but I'm not... 100% happy with it. This is my color combination and I also wanted to show you the extras that I used. So, sorry, echo. So I have there an earring hook with a navet shaped cubic zirconia which, which I love using. I think it fits so many shapes so well. And then I also used a glass drop in metal setting. I think this is the five times 16 millimeter size, if I remember it well, or five times 14. This was also included in the Beading School Academy box inspired by the Jardin Majorel. So, Please. Do you have any questions about the material that you need for today's earrings? Please let me know before we would start beading. If you have any other questions not connected to what we are working on now, then I would like to ask a little patience of you. Please remember, make notes, make notes of all your, uh, please remember all your questions and you will have a possibility to ask everything you would like to when we finish beading the fez earrings. But now let's focus on beading this, okay? Thank you so much. Also, Christine, Christiana joined us and Renee and Cindy and Dawn. Someone is traveling, Malia, is that you? I don't see your name, but I know that you are, uh, that Malia is at a gorgeous place. So, if you don't have, enjoy your travels. If you don't have any questions about the material, search Cindy joining us today and Andrasta. If you don't have any more questions about the tutorial, then let's start beading. I will remove now my face camera from the picture. Please let me know if you will still be able to hear me. I am always a little bit anxious when switching microphones and cameras. So I will remove my face, leave my hand camera, and also put the illustrations on the screen. So, can you still hear me? Is it okay? And it's Mektab. Mektab, where are you traveling? <laughs> so, I hope that you can still hear me. Okay, Yosin says that all is okay. Thank you so much, Yosin, for letting me know. Then let's start beading. I have my usual 0 0.12 millimeter 4 LB fire line in black satin. I don't use the smoke gray because it leaves marks. It always makes my 
bead my dirty. So I use the black satin and I have a size 11 tulip beading needle. And let's see what's happening in step one. In step one, I pick up one, two, three, four pieces of six millimeter Miyuki Slender Bugle beads and four pieces of the three millimeter fire polished beads interchangeably to create a square. So it means bugle, fire polished bead, bugle, fire polished bead, and so on until all four and four are on my needle. I let them fall to the end of my thread, leaving a 10, 12 centimeter or five, six inches long tail that I will secure and trim later. I push my needle through everything one more time to create the square. And then I bead through the first bugle and the first fire polished bead one more time. So I'm my goal is to exit a fire polished bead and to have a nice strong base for the bezel. This will go on the front of my motif. And hi Donna. In step two. I am adding some seed beads. So I will pick up around 15 seed beads. Remember exiting from a fire polished bead. I pick up around 15 seed bead. I pick up a delica. I pick up around 11, another delica and around 15. So with five pieces of seed beads on my needle, I bead one more time through the same fire polished bead that I am exiting. I was exiting before picking up the new ones. And then I bead also through the slender bugle and also through the next fire polished bead. And my task now is, and your task, is to add the same combination of the five seed beads or around all four of the fire polished beads. So exiting a fire polished bead, I pick up round 15, delica, round 11, delica, round 15. And then I bead one more time through the same fire polished bead and I continue through the slender bugle and the next fire polished bead. How is it going, ladies? And please tell me if everyone is working with the original colors or if someone is out there experimenting. As you see, I'm somewhere in between experimenting and sticking to the original colors, mostly original colors. I'm now adding the last group of five seed beads. The fourth. And then I bead through the fire polished bead and I continue through the slender bugle and also through the very first fire polished bead where I attached the seed beads around. And then I finish by beading through round 15, delica, round 11. So I should finish this step with my thread hanging from around 11 seed bead.
And Cindy says, I have my first box and can't wait to beat everything. Oh my god. I, I actually I am I am jealous of you like reliving the experience for the first time because I think it was a good one. <laughs> and yeah, but like most importantly, Cindy, welcome to the welcome to the beating school family and wishing you lots and lots of happy moments with your box and with your bead mat. Anytime when you need, please don't hesitate to uh, post your question in the beading school club or in the virtual classroom. Your fellow classmates and we from the beading school designer team are here to help you. <laughs> Claudia is experimenting, by the way. Sherry is using the originals. Terry is using, she says, basically using the same with little changes. Margaret, same. Yosin, I am using green and the rust color. That sounds interesting. Belinda changed only the three millimeter fire polished beads for gold. Facebook user friend says, I only changed the, the Tila to another color blue, but the rest stays the same. I think it will also be very interesting to see the design in like similar, but not exactly similar color combinations to like see how, how the little changes, changing only one bead shape make it look different and different. Zuska is working on a different project, but she says, it is so nice to hear you and meet with the community. Oh, Rachel says, I am using a sapphire rivoli. I want to keep the orange rivolis for Veronica's blooming so pendant. And good that you are mentioning it because it is coming during the weekend. It is time to be the second signature. So set your calendars for Sunday. Veronka's wonderful pendant is coming. Erika is asking, if you don't like your color combination, why are you making another in the same colors? Because I already have half an earring. So I want to complete my pair. <laughs> I was really not sure if I like it or not until I cut the last thread and then it would be said to like, just leave another one half pair of earring. And I don't have time, sorry. I don't have time to beat it <laughs> completely anew. And now let's see what's going on in step three. This is when we are going to insert the Rivoli, but not yet. So first, we pick up around 15, a bugle, and another round 15. And then we bead, we are working on the back, by, by the way. And we bead through the round 11 in the middle of the next group of five seed beads. So this is how it will look like from the side. The new group of beads, round 15, bugle round 15, is connecting to round 11s. And the two bugles, they sit under each other. So basically, when you look at them from the top, then you see more or less only one. And the other one is under the first one. And you do the same over and over again. All around. Erika says, so you don't want to frog? No, I'm so not in the mood of cutting apart what I have made. <laughs> Still, it felt like a bigger, bigger accomplishment having a full pair of earrings than like having to frog and then, okay, I could go for a brooch. I love brooches, as you might have noticed. But somehow I was not in the mood to destroy what I have done. And now that I have added three of the combinations, 
of round 15, bugle round 15, I slide in my rivoli face down because I am working now on the back side of the bezel. And then I'm holding it with my thumb. And then I add the last fourth group of round 15, Delica round 15. And then I go just as before through the round 11 and I continue also through the first group of round 15, bugle round 15. So I build this little box with the bugles, one layer of bugles on the front, one layer of bugles on the back, and the rival is sitting in between. Ginny says, oh, I love how this works. I'm so glad, Ginny, and welcome, Wanda and Eudia. Eudia, is it your first time? I haven't seen, seen you yet. Welcome. Such a, such a special day that so many new leaders are joining us today. Rachel says also, oh, wow, I love this bezel. So easy, yet so intricate. And indeed, easy and clever and pretty, as Facebook user friend says, there are no questions. So I'm going on step four. This time I am repeating the thread path kind of with a small change. So I am beading only through the newly added beads from the previous step. And I skip the round 11s that are in between the round 15s. So when I pull my thread, then the round 15s get super close to each other. I did my round. All the corners are nice and sharp now. And I finish by beading through round 11, Delica, and round 15 back towards the front of the motif. And let's see what's happening in step five. In step five, exit, I start by exiting a size 15. And then again, I make the bezel a bit tighter by beading through bugle, round 15, delica. I don't go through the round 11, but right away to delica and round 15. And then to the next slender bugle. And this is how I bead all around the motif always pulling the two Delica beads closer to each other. How is it going so far, ladies? I hope that everyone is doing well. Natalie shared in the meanwhile, Amethyst Trivoli and Shades of Turquoise, Silver and Amethyst beads. Bex is using the same beads, but with turquoise rivolis. Ginny is using Zuzi's colors. Deb is experimenting. Someone says to me, you might like your color combination tomorrow. Or hopefully one of my friends will like it and I can, I can maybe gift it to someone. A 
I'm nearly done with this circle. I really like how the bezel is getting tighter and tighter. And I should finish by beading through some seed beads round 15, delica, delica, round 15. So at the end, my thread is hanging from round 15 towards a milky slender bugle. And Mary says, I appreciate the picture next to the video. It helps my brain get what you are telling us. And I'm really happy that you like it this way. Mary, it took some time to figure out what works best. I'm also very happy with it. And Lita says, my bezel is very flippy floppy. Is this correct? So I really needed, my experience is that I really needed these steps four and five to get it tight. Until that point, it was a bit flippy floppy for me too so if if you are not yet done with that part then i wouldn't worry but i would also love to hear the experience of fellow beaders because it might be different than my my experience claire likes my color combination okay claire we are actually meeting up soon so <laughs> <laughs> and Ula is here today also. In the meanwhile, let's see what's happening in step six. This might seem like a bit more complicated step, but please don't worry. I will talk you through it. I will also, sorry, I will change with a little beading around my uh, thread direction to match Zuzi's illustration or is it just easier for you if I am showing exactly the same that is on the picture because at some point I somehow I somehow changed my direction sometimes things can be done in many different ways and it differs from beader to beader that what is intuitive to us. And today's tutorial is done by Zuzi, and I want to match what she is doing. And Yosin says for her it's sturdy. Rene said uh, shared her color combination. It's red, red Maria, Picasso or black. Oh, it, uh, red and blue uh, look so good together. And Natalie says, my bezel was floppy too, but another round of thread through each side made it secure. Thank you for sharing that, Natalie, and I hope that it will help Lita too. Rachel says, it's not super tight for me, but it keeps its shape. And it feels secure for her. So now I am exiting the round 15 in the correct direction and I continue by adding a tila bead first. I pick up a tila and then I bead through a round 15 and a delica on the next corner. So the tila will kind of slide under, just a little bit under the slender bugle right next to it and here exiting the delica I pick up around 11 I pick up a four millimeter preciosa bicon and a milky delica bead I bead back through the bicon and I bead back also through the round 11 I bead through the delica and around 15 
the second part of this little V shape on the corner. And then I adjust my beads a little bit to make sure that they sit nice and tight. Metallica is nice, the round 11 is nice, there is no gap, the thread is not showing. So this is the first part. And then again, a Tila bead. Exiting around 15, entering around 15. And this time I don't beat through the Delica. The side is a little bit different. So I beat only through around 15 here. Then exiting the round 15, I pick up three pieces of the round 15. A fire polished bead, a four millimeter fire polished bead in this case. And three more round 15s. So this is what I have on my needle. And then I bead through around 15. I bead backwards through my green <laughs> three millimeter fire polished bead. And then I'm strengthening this loop here by beading through all four round 15s that are sitting here. One was added earlier and three were added in this step. I bead through the four millimeter fire polished bead. And I finish by beading through the four round 15s on the other side too. This is a little bit tricky. But my recommendation is to like look closely at the thread path bead by bead when you feel insecure about something that just follow it with your eye how you are like navigating your car or navigating your bike. And you see like right hand turn, left hand turn. I go through this bead, that bead. So just take it in slowly, slowly and breaking it down bead by bead. It will make it easier. I will repeat this because we are doing it one more time to complete the bezel. So if you are not 100% sure yet, you want to first like um, absorb it one more time, then just watch me and then you can try it on your own. And Brit Marie joined us also. So I turn my bezel to match the illustration and I am again exiting around 15 and please let me know how this part is going for you. I am exiting around 15 and I need a Miyuki Tila. I bead through around 15 and also a Delica bead in this case. I pull my thread. I make sure that the Tila bead is nicely nesting next to the slender bugle. I pick up around 11. I pick up a four millimeter bicone bead and I pick up a Miyuki Delica. The Delica will hold this pico decoration and I bead back through the bicone and the round 11. Here I like to stop and arrange the beads. I bead through the other Delica and round 15. And actually this is the part when, when I can really arrange the pico and make sure that it looks nice. And
Facebook user friend says, I'm glad I'm watching you do this pattern first. It is a little bit, it seems to be a little bit tricky at the beginning, but Zuzi explains it very well also in her instructions. So I'm sure you will master it. And in any case, just ask your question in the club, please. And hi, Facebook user friend. So now exiting around 15, I am again adding Attila and I bead only through around 15. So when I am adding the bicon, then I am beading through round 15 and that by and delica. When I am adding the fire polished bead and seed beads around it, then I bead only through around 15. So now my thread is exiting around 15 and I pick up three round 15s. A four millimeter fire polished and three more round 15s. I see a question from Claire. She says, big question, is black satin fire line the same as black or are they two different colors? Officially, there is only black satin and no black. So officially there is smoke gray and black satin and black satin is the one I recommend to use. With the seven beads, six seed beads and the four millimeter fire polished bead on my uh, needle, I enter the round 15 on the other side, create this little loop. Then I bead backwards through the fire polished bead. I repeat the loop. So I bead through four pieces of the round 15s. I bead through the four millimeter fire polished bead and I finish by beading through four pieces of the uh, of the round 15s. I don't know if you have noticed but I pushed directly the needle under my fingernail and that didn't feel good. <laughs> Okay, it's not bad, it's not bleeding, so it's okay. <gasps> so, I have now the hard part. And let's see what's happening in step seven. And we have one more beater who is joining us for the first time. Probably she says, finally made it to a live. I'm not be not able to keep up, but enjoying it just the same. I'm glad that you made it today. Such a special day. <laughs> Thank you for making the time. So this is how it looks like at the moment. And... Oh, Rachel says, ouch, I hate it when that happens. <laughs> I usually scream bigger, actually, when it happens. I tend to bead quite energetically. So then I push it more under my needle and I scream. And then Adam asks automatically, like, okay, what's happening? And then in half a second later, he's like, no, don't tell me, don't tell me. Because he already knows usually what's happening when I scream. And, scream, and he just doesn't want to imagine it, I think. <laughs> and then she says, don't feel bad. This group is hard to keep up with. I'm always behind. And ladies, I just want to mention that there is no set pace. Beads are patient. Tutorials are patient. We give you lots of options because maybe not everyone likes every tutorial. Maybe you want to select what you want to be. But if you have a busier time in your life and you bead less or 
you go on a vacation and all you do is only beading, beading, beading. So you bead three times as much as normally. All is well. All is well. There is not one correct pace. And even if it was a tutorial that we published like a year ago or two years ago or five years ago, it doesn't matter. We, we, we help if you have a question. So don't worry. So after a bit of rest and breathing through my accident, <laughs> let's continue with step eight. In step eight, we are reinforcing the tila beads in their positions. So my thread is hanging from the round 15. I bead through a tila. I bead through round 15 and delica. And then here, be careful, you don't bead through the round 11 that is like part of the bezel, but you bead through the round 11 that is sitting under the bicone that you added later. So first you bead through this round 11 uh, sitting under the bicone, and then you pick up five pieces of your round 15s. I'm using here a second color. I bead through the delica sitting on the top of the bicone. And again, I pick up five delica beads and then a very nice thread path is coming that Zuzi came up with for securing this decoration for the bicone. So I beaded backwards through the round 11 under the bicone first, and then in order to be able to turn around, I bead, this time I bead through the round 11 that is on the back. This is where I turn around. You know, this is, I, I was comparing following the thread path to navigation. This is when, when your navigation says, make a U-turn if possible. It's possible. <laughs> and now, again, you bead through the round 11 under the bicone. It's a bit turning around, but it actually doesn't matter which group of five is on the left and right at this moment. So I bead through the first five round 15s. I bead through a delica on the top and then from the second group, I bead through three round 15s, not all five, but only three. And then I pick up another round 15. And of course, you can use the same color for your round 15s. I'm using two different ones. Also, I'm by now, I'm not happy with that choice, but mm, not every beading story is a success story. This is like a learning experience for me too. Sometimes you learn what works, sometimes you learn what doesn't. Anyway, exiting the first three round 15s, I pick up another round 15 and a three millimeter bicone. I beat through the second open hole of the next nearest tila. And then I pick up the same, but in opposite order. So first, oh no, sorry, I don't pick up a round 15 here. I just pick up a bicone. Lita has to go, so. Thank you for coming, Lita, and see you soon. Have a nice weekend. <laughs> yeah. 
So picking up a bicone and then I bead through round 15, four millimeter fire polished bead and round 15. I pick up one more bicone and I bead through the second open hole of the next Dilla bead. Whew, this was a long step. <laughs> but as Rachel says, a very smart and intricate U-turn. I love the shape it gives to the bicone. Indeed, I love how it is framed. Claudia also has to, has to go have a nice weekend. Claudia, thank you for coming and spending time together. Facebook user friend is sharing a good tip. She says, for the difficult needle passes, I use a small silicon pad to push the needle and as a needle puller to get a good hold of the needle. Thank you so much. And let's see what's happening in step nine. In step nine, we are completing this decoration on the edge. So I am exiting a tila bead and I pick up a three millimeter bicone. I also pick up four pieces of round 15s. And since I am using two different colors, the first one will be blue and three will be gold because those three will be part around the decoration, uh, part of the decoration around the bicon. And with these five beads on my needle, I bead through the Delica sitting on the top of the bicon. Now I'm doing the U-turn thread pass. So I pick up five pieces of the round 15s for the frame around the bicone. I push my needle through the round 11 sitting under the bicone bead. Then I make the U-turn by beading through the round 11 on the back. Sorry, I removed my beading from the camera for a little bit. So I turn around in the round 11 on the back. I bead back through the round 11 under the bicone and I already have three pieces out of the five here. So all I need are two extra pieces of the round 15s and I complete this frame by beading through these three pieces of round 15s that I picked up earlier. And then I bead through the Delica sitting on the top of the bicone and three out of the five round 15s. Ladies, are you still with me? I don't see comments coming in. Are you doing well? In the meanwhile, while I am waiting for, for your answers, I pick up a round 15 and a three millimeter bicone and I bead through the second open hole of the next tila bead. Now, again, I need a tila. And I finish this step. Uh, I need a bicone. I bead through. Sorry, I'm not at finishing it. I bead through round 15, four millimeter fire polished bead round 15. Again, I pick up a three millimeter bicone. I bead through the open hole of the next tila. I pick up one more bicone and around 15 in my first color. I bead through three round 15s. And now I'm just repeating the thread path. Delica. 
for round 15's Bicon Tila Bicon and I finish by beading through a round 15 next to the 4mm fire polished bead. So this is how it looks like at the moment. And Sherry says, she's watching, and Guna says, I'm sitting outside and there was a wind, not so funny, everything is a mess. Oh, I hope you didn't have your beads outside, Gunal, that they are all right. And Bex says, this is such a clever design. I'm so happy that you like it. So after step nine, this is how my this is how my uh, motif looks like, and uh, like, and it's nearly done. In step nine, I need my second bunch of pictures. In step nine, I pick up two pieces of Delica, around fifteen, another two pieces of Delica. And then I bead into round 15 on the other side of the 4 mm fire polished bead. Afterwards, I just bead through all the beads on the edge until I get into position to add those five beads next to the 4 mm fire polished bead on the other side. So here I am. My thread hanging from around 15 towards a 4 mm fire polished bead. And again, I pick up two Miyuki Delicas around 15 and two more Miyuki Delicas. And then I can continue. The motive is basically done now, and I, what I did after this, I attached the earring hook, I attached the drop at the bottom. As you can see, the earring hook has a left to right loop at the bottom, so I needed this kind of attachment, and then the uh, the drop has a front to back loop. You can see the difference here. And on the blog, on the Beading School blog, I have an article where I explained you both ways how you can attach these kinds of findings to your beadwork to personalize them. It's called How to Attach Metal Findings to Your Beadwork, if you need help with it. So, I hope you liked this. Also, additionally, if you want, you can add all kinds of bezels, cabochons, as Zuzi did. You can attach it to a filigree. There are many, many different options how you can personalize this. That's what I like about beading with beading with these universal motifs. And at the end, we finish all having, even if we start with similar beads, but all having a very personal, beloved jewel. And Antoinette says, I love a live video on Fridays. Makes my day so nice. I'm so happy about that, Antoinette. And then Belinda says, I am done. I did the 8mm chaton at the top and no drop at the bottom. I just realized I could have put a point, a pico on the bottom, which I think would have looked very nice. Like 3 fifteenths to frame the bottom 4mm by cone. Theoretically, you can still add a new thread and do that if you if you want to. I'm already very curious of your version, Belinda. And then we have Chini. Could you repeat the change that you mentioned at the start, please? I missed it and I think I have done it incorrectly. Um, the Oh, you mean the material list? Uh, the mistake in it was that the list, it said 
two times the four millimeter fire polished bead instead of using four and three millimeter fire polished bead. So if you download it now, Ginny, go please for the free version. I don't know if you purchased it or not, but in any way, please go for the free version to have it again. And then you, ha you will have it correctly. Important is that you need three millimeter fire polished beads for the first step. And then later when you add uh, the two fire polished beads as decorations on the edge, those should be four millimeter ones. And Elena has a question, or oh, sorry, sorry, I missed, missed some comments first. Sometimes it's not easy to follow everything coming in from the club and the page and YouTube. Sherry says, such a pretty tube. Sharon says, late to the gathering. This is beautiful. And Renée says, I'm almost done. Very happy with the design and colors. And Elena says, I also have a question related to Fireline threads. Does the smoke version contain a substance called niobium? I have just been diagnosed with poisoning with this substance. I used to put the thread in my mouth before I put it in the needle. And my hands are forever stained from this thread that I adore. I'm so sorry to hear about that, Elena. It is not something that I can answer you right away. Uh, please send us a question and if it's not on the packaging then we will get in touch with the supplier to find out the answer for you. And Rachel had to solve a little issue with breaking a bead. That's a good solution sometimes. And Erica says, have you ever tried any other braided fishing line? And yes, I did. And I didn't like it. There was, there is an older brand which is cheaper actually. I don't recall the name now, but I didn't like how it behaved. I went back to Fireline. So ladies, thank you so much for joining me today. And before I would say goodbye, I would like to once more invite you to the birthday celebrations of Beating School. It will be a full week of events that we are working on already for months to celebrate the community and creating. And it will start next Tuesday with a special coffee time with Erica. And then on Friday, we will have also a special edition of No One Has To Be The One. We are beading together next uh, Friday also. But the design is a surprise. I published the material list. You will find it if you go to beadingschool.com and you click events, then you will find the material list. But you will learn what we are beading only on Friday. And also the whole week we are bringing you like all kinds of things that we've prepared for example, you will have a chance to visit the Beading School Treasury and to meet my, uh, meet my colleagues, the, tr uh, the Treasury team. You, uh, there will, uh, that will be on Saturday. We will have a storytelling night on Sunday. There will be new shinies. There will be a day celebrating friends, designers. So really lots and lots of things are coming. Please sign up to the event and mark going to get a notification because I think it will be really nice to participate. And we would love celebrating together with you. So thank you so much, ladies, for joining me today. I can't wait to next week's Beating School Birthday Week and to celebrate together and to, uh, wishing you now 
a nice weekend, happy beading, and a nice time with your loved ones during the days of resting. Bye-bye. <laughs>